Kia ora and welcome to CIO Leadership Live New Zealand. I'm your host, Cathy O'Sullivan, editor for CIO New Zealand. And my guest today is Simon Kennedy, Chief Digital Officer at Foodstuffs North Island. Hello, Simon. How are you doing? Hi, Cathy. Doing great, thanks. Hope you are as well. Good, good. And it's great to have you here. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about your role at Foodstuffs North Island and what your team does? Sure, yeah, look, great to be here too. Um, look, let's start off with uh, just a little bit of an overview of Foodstuffs North Island. Um, so, you know, we're the cooperative that's behind uh, Pack and Save, New World, Foursquare, and uh, Gilmore's, our wholesale food service business. Um, so that's, you know, that's around sort of 330 stores across the North Island, plus, of course, all of those have got digital uh, you know, online assets as well. Um, so my role is Chief Digital Officer. Now, that can mean different things at different places. Here at Foodies, uh, it's the role that looks after you know, all of the people who look after all of the technology is probably the best way of putting it. So uh, everything that's kind of customer facing, so our web stores and our apps, uh, et cetera, but also all of the, the business enterprise systems. So yeah, supply chain, finance, HR, security, et cetera, et cetera. So um, yeah, that's that's the role. That's me. Um, great to hear. So, you know, many organizations have gone through huge um, periods of change in the last decade and even more so during the pandemic. And we often talk about transformation as if it's, you know, a given, it's a reality, it's something that's easy to do. But in reality, it, it isn't that easy and it can actually be quite difficult. So can you talk us through how that approach has taken shape in your own career? Yeah, look, um, I mean, you're right. Transformation is it's not that easy. And actually, I, I, I don't think it's that common either. I, um, I remember quite some years ago, I, I gave a sort of a, a talk, a presentation somewhere about about transformation. And, and I was a little bit kind of skeptical about about the word itself. I, I sort of said, look, it's getting thrown around. Almost every change is being described as transformational. And it's that's sort of in some ways almost cheapening the concept and, and making it appear you know, easier than it than it than it really is. So, you know, my my sort of personal take, I guess, on transformation and, and through experience over the years um, is that, you know, the case studies we read tend to be written with the benefit of hindsight. You know, they're looking back on something that, is, that has changed and, and usually not from an unbiased position either, right? It's from a, from a, from a participant in the change. And, and the impression that those kind of case studies will give is that um, the transformation was, was planned and deliberate and, you know, this we we chose this and then this happened and then good things happened after that and you know and it will and the, the leaders you know were blessed with amazing insight and could 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 kind of just think it and then it then it came true i think the reality when you live transformation you know in real time and moving forwards not kind of you know looking backwards is that it's kind of you know it's messy it's unpredictable uh it's, it's driven by yeah leaders with a strong sense of purpose of where they want to get to but probably less idea than we think on how they're actually going to do it right um and you know, i think the other sort of aspect is that for change to be truly transformational almost by definition it's going to be over a decent period of time and it's going to be over a you know a broad canvas and and so you're not necessarily going to experience it as a transformation in any given moment um i like to pick you know, I like to make historical analogies. So let's, you know, let's imagine you're, I don't think there were Europeans sitting around in the 15th century going, oh, hey, how's this Renaissance thing going? You know, can't wait to the 1490s when we kick into that next milestone. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be awesome. It's just, it's just not how transformation really lands in, in terms of the, you know, in terms of the lived reality. Um, and I think that, yeah, that context just gets you thinking a little differently about, okay, so what's, what can my role be in transformation? What can my team's role be? What can what can sort of an individual do? Uh, and it leads you more to thinking about how do we, you know, lead around alignment to a purpose, which in time is going to drive a transformation, rather than you know, here's a plan. This is what we're doing. We get to here, then we go there, and we get to there next. So with the benefit of hindsight, then, yeah. and 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 you touched on it a little bit there, but you know, do you think? Are there any key steps that do stand out or is it, as you say, you know, it is a kind of, it does evolve uh, along the way, depending on the circumstances? Yeah, look, I, I think I think more evolutionary than, than, than key steps, but to sort of, you know, that build up, to build on that point of it being a bit messier than you think, um, 
you know, I don't think it's about here's a start line and here's a finish line and, and blocking the chance. And to uh, to kind of put that into context for us here at Foodies, our current um, sort of transformational arc is best summed up by by the expression customer driven efficiency. That's what we're kind of moving towards: customer driven efficiency, aligning everything to the customer, all of our decisions, all of our operations, all of our activities, aligning to to what's best for the customer, and then bringing in efficiency so that we can. Yeah, effectively maintain the prices that our customers need you know in in the store um so if we take as an example uh, e-commerce as a business area within that overall kind of journey now our journey through e-commerce is one that would typically be thought of as a transformation you know we've we're building e-commerce channels into retail banners for which there previously were no e-commerce channels so that is that is you know it's a tra- it's a transformation it's driven by uh, customer demand uh, for you know, for that channel, and of course it needs to be efficient so that we can uh, operate it sustainably. And yeah, we can break that down into into um, kind of practical steps along the way, and it will make it sound pretty straightforward. Let's understand, you know, let's get some insight around the customer first. Let's gain that customer insight. Let's use that to to map out a proposition that the customers are going to engage with. Let's build the capability in the infrastructure that's going to support that proposition. Let's operate that. Um, and by operating it, we're going to gain some further insights in terms of how it lands, and we can loop that back into improving the proposition. And so the loop continues. So, so that's kind of, you know, sounds like a nice structured journey and you just move through it, you know, and yeah, we're going great. We're into that sort of looping phase of, of successive iterations, successive iterations. But um, the reality is the journey is a little harder than that kind of, um, you know, laying it out like that will make it sound. Um, it's absolutely doable, but you've also got to be, um, you know, as much as driving the sort of the physical side of, of what, you're, what you're building and what you're putting out there for customers, it's also about driving some things you can't see. It's about, you know, for us, inspiring a customer-driven mindset and adopting, um, you know, customer-driven behaviours every person, you know, every day. Um, and I think that kind of brings us back to this idea that, that a, a genuine transformation is sort of the, the overall impact of a th- sort of thousand, almost under, you know, thousands of undetectable little changes that, that add up to something which is, when you look back, is totally different from, from where you were before. Um, so an example, this is like a tiny, tiny example of that, I think, but it's, it's something that um, was actually just, just last week, um, I was on a, on, a, on a Saturday evening. This 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 thing happened, and it kind of made me think. Actually, this is, in a tiny way, this is a, an, an example of transformation happening, you know, right before our eyes. And um, we had a one of the teams, one of my teams that that weekend, was uh, executing a, a change over the weekend. I think it was testing the DR capability for a transport management system. Um, really important, but in some ways very routine as well. I remember I got a I got an update on my phone of, of the sort of the progress uh, sort of middle of Saturday evening, and I kind of looked at this update and I just had to show the person that I was with. I said, "Oh, sometimes I'm so proud of my team. Check this out, um, because the update it just it was just perfect, right? It was it, it visually told you exactly what you needed to know straight away. It was written in language that anyone could understand. It, it told you where we are, where things are at, what happens next, what you should th- feel about this, you know." And here's what here's, you know. Here's when you're going to get the next update. And I thought that's so cool. And the reason it's so cool is it's quite different from how that update would have been given, you know, more recently. And and how that had come about is the team involved had, had actually thought about well, who's going to be receiving this? How can we make it work for them? What's the kind of the customer based language we can wrap this up in rather than the sort of TMSDR type language we can apply? And then they'd reached out to the team that actually um, kind of work on things like comms and change to figure out what the template would look like. Um, so, you know, a tiny, tiny change in the context of an overall, you know, business journey. And yet somehow kind of, for me, you know, symptomatic of, yeah, people are, are starting to think differently around how they're doing you know, the daily work, daily tasks. And that is what adds up over time to moving a massive organization like Foodstuffs into a shape where we are, you know, truly customer driven and really driving in that efficiency every day. Um, so yeah, tiny, tiny example, but part of a, a, a big, you know, overall change. And I find that quite exciting, frankly. 
That's that's a beautiful example of putting the user at the heart of that change. Um, and you know, great that that's what your team is 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 putting in place and actually delivering to your customers. But as you mentioned, you know, change is messy. Um, you know, whether it's deliberate or not, transformation can be hard. So what are some of those kind of key challenges or roadblocks to be aware of for any CIO when they are under undergoing any any period of change? Yeah, I am. I think it's a uh, it's maybe one of the sort of the ambiguities of of trying to drive change successfully is that that to be successful you you're going to need a sort of a steadfast determination you need perseverance right but the trap is to avoid kind of getting too locked into a particular route towards where you're trying to get to so stay really focused on you know what's the what's the sort of the the beacon in the distance we're trying to get towards but stay agile in the true sense of the word you know um, flexible around how you're prepared to get there because I think where where things can go wrong is we kind of we mistake the interim milestones for the goal and, and kind of get you know locked into that being the mission rather than the mission is to get you know towards that beacon in the distance um, and and I think you know specifically mistakes tend to tend to come through when you are out of balance on on one dimension or another. Um, I think it's rare that the right answer to a um, you know the right answer to any particular question is you know a hundred percent like how fast do you want to go. We want to go as fast as possibly as fast as possible. You know um, how big do we want to be? We want to be as big as possible. I think it's it's always the case that you know you might try and move too fast and trip up, but you might try and move too slow and and you know not keep pace with your your, your customer expectations or the market you might have uh, you know too big a scale of ambition and and you you genuinely do take on something that's unachievable and that's not going to go well but of course you don't want to be too small either so finding that sweet spot you might uh, want to engage everybody in a consultation or in a you know cultural aspect of the program well, yeah, maybe you did, shouldn't be doing that. You don't want to include nobody, but you probably don't, maybe don't want to include everybody, not, not right from the outset. So it's often that kind of judgment of where's the balance on, on, on some dimension you're trying to plan out um, and, and being prepared to, you know, change your opinion if the facts change, if you know what I mean? Like there's no point being locked into... You know, here's, here's, here's the mission. The mission is launched by Christmas. Well, maybe it's not. Maybe the mission is to get to the, the full kind of cultural transformation that we're trying to achieve. And we should be, you know, flexible in our mindset in terms of exactly how and exactly when um, we, we get there along the way. So is there ever an end date to transformation? I mean, we've touched on this earlier and you said, you know, um, transformation, it's an evolution, not a revolution. Um, but is it, you know, should it still be seen in some cases as a project with deadlines and milestones? Or is it just an overall ongoing development within a business? And with that, on, if it is an ongoing development, what's the risk of burnout with, you know, change fatigue? Mm, yeah, good. Uh, yeah, good. And, and, you know, very relevant, you think, to where we've been these last few years, it has been an absolute, you know, journey for for all organisations and having all kinds of pressures as we've kind of navigated our way through through COVID and and uh, you know absolute marathon, not a sprint to use use the cliche. But to come back to the question, um, uh, I'm all for milestones and deadlines, but those those are those are specific. They're sort of specific things where you line up around a, a you know a, a date for a reason and you you land it. I think clearly there's no end date for transformation as a whole. Um, yeah, organizations don't finish their strategy and then do the non-strategic stuff. There's, there's always a strategy being delivered. I think it's 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 useful to kind of think of that strategy in or, uh, and indeed transformation as kind of having chapters or you know arcs of delivery. Um, so I think there's a sort of a natural sort of three-year arc you can tend to put on a, on a strategic journey, but you're never going to kind of cleanly finish it and start the next one you're always going to kind of move um uh, from one piece you know one piece to the next uh i something i kind of look to do in planning out things for um you know here and with my team is to is to try and think about sort of three horizons um so you know one is the the absolute here and now you know what are we having to do effectively today to make sure tomorrow is okay that's kind of 
that's job number one actually in in you know most in most businesses then think about the the kind of the two to three year horizon what is the which for me is sort of the 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 direct the um the time scale that's kind of broadly planable you can kind of map it out with some degree of um you know some reasonable degree of, of certainty of what's going to happen but then also think about the 10 year horizon uh, because you know you clearly can't map out a 10 year horizon with with a, any degree of certainty but by thinking about where you might need to be in 10 years it should guide you guide your thinking on maybe how do we want to travel through the next 2 to 3 to put us in shape to kind of land that that next piece um Picking up on the on on the burnout thing, uh, you know, difficult. I think that's a that's a that's a very current and topical, you know, challenge for uh, for leadership is is you know how are we looking after uh, looking after people, looking after the teams, and actually looking after ourselves as we kind of go through what feels like a pretty much you know unending um, sort of journey of, of a transformation while dealing with uh, things that the world is throwing us at the moment. Um, uh, it's certainly something we are very uh, mindful of you know, here, here at Foodies. Um, we have been putting a, a lot of attention on, you know, making sure teams are um, encouraged, empowered, enabled to, to, you know, to take the breaks, to, to use the leave. Um, it's been great with the, with the borders opening up recently that uh, we've been able to, you know, support people and allow people to take longer breaks than might normally be the case, you know, to, to, Get overseas and reconnect with family for the first time in years, and and um, you know mix that up with a bit of work overseas, but 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 take that really long break or you know etc. So um, yeah, all, all of that, but but certainly important. Uh, great to hear. Great to hear that you're supporting your employees in that way. Um, so then, Simon, as chief digital officer, in what ways do you collaborate and influence the organisation and its leadership team? Yeah. Uh, I think it's an advantage. It's an advantage in, in my role that, that tech is so pervasive that there are that there's touch points everywhere. Right? I don't have to go out and find them. That there's the touch points to to pretty much everything that's going on uh, across the business every day. So that that sort of provides a natural inroad in terms of that ability to influence um, the opportunities of, of, of frequent. Um, you know, for me personally, for for my teams, for my leadership group, uh, we're in amongst it every day. Um, as an organisation, uh, food is, is is actually pretty well set up for for kind of cross-functional touch points and collaboration. Um, something I like here, as an example, is that we have a a daily what we call our heartbeat meeting as an exec every eight thirty every morning, you know, online in person, you know, however it works. But that means you know, opportunities to support each other cross-functionally across that exec team. You know, they're never they're never going to go more than a day without having a chance to, 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 you know, raise the thing, discuss the thing, get visibility across it, uh, make sure we're capturing what needs to be done to, to sort of help each other out. Um, it keeps everyone close to what's going on. It means that, um, you know, we all of us as a team get a chance to, um, to share, to influence, and I think really importantly to be influenced as well, uh, you know, and, and, and kind of cross pollinate that thinking. And I think by understanding each other's roles, that, you know, helps us, to, to more effectively be aligned around what we're trying to do, um, you know, for a customer and not kind of disappear into our own functionally driven worlds. You know, we kind of keep it pretty real in that sense. Uh, I think another thing over the last couple of years, we've made good progress around our strategic planning processes and our sort of in-year uh, planning and, and, and resource allocation processes. Um, you know, in particular, how we've been able to remove from some of the silos from, you know, from how we were working before. Um, it's been led out by our GM strategy and I've you know, really enjoyed working closely with her and, and with our CFO to, to kind of nut through the mechanics of, of, of how that process works. And you know, I think, again, being part of that is also a chance for me to bring influence into that process, you know, to bring some of the, the, the good things that we'll be doing in the technology space, you know, some of the um, agile planning, big room planning, that kind of thing, you know, and more broadly uh, influence how we're how we're kind of planning and, and, and delivering right across the business. So then when it comes to your own team, um, you know, we all know it, it's very difficult out there now retaining talent or attracting talent. There's more roles than there are people to fill them. Mm -hmm. So how are you creating that internal culture that really helps your people thrive and, you know, feel really engaged and connected to the organization? Yeah, I'm... Um, 
I think I actually just yesterday, I remember, I think someone was uh, saying to me something like, oh, look, we know we're succeeding when we see this stuff just happening around us, you know, and, and we're not, we're not, doesn't feel like we're leading it anymore. It's just, it's just happening. And, and I'm really proud of what my team are achieving, um, you know, it, it, in this area and the, 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 the things we participate in as a, as a team. And then that sort of flows benefit back into the team as well. So, uh, for example, we've got a couple of uh, we've got a couple of mission ready students with us here at the moment. Um, you can look up what mission ready is uh, if you're watching. It's it's well worth getting involved in. Um, but uh, we've got them with us now and and doing some some really interesting work. But but learning by doing it, and we're, it's really great to support that program. Uh, we uh, support uh, a few different student immersion um, schemes to sort of get people in and, and see what it looks like. Uh, we've got an internship program we run. Uh, this year, actually, we started up um, new positions which uh, in our SAP apprenticeship scheme. So pretty excited ar around that and what it's what it's delivered. Um, so bringing in a, a cohort of, of people that uh, um, you know not from an SAP skilled background, um, but you know really capable, really keen, and really um, with a desire to to learn, and then providing that a, an opportunity over a structured. 18 month program to, to build out those skills such that we can um, grow our own internal pipeline around SAP skills, which is a uh, yeah, hugely sought after um, skill set just now. Um, the team are, are very involved in uh, diversity and inclusion community that we have here in Foodies. Uh, fantastic. We were able to sort of uh, quite recently celebrate our accreditation for the Rainbow Tick. Um, so that was, uh, that, was a, that was a good day. Um, and a, a really exciting recent development um, is the work that uh, the extended leadership team within within IT here has done. To they they brought together an, a, a sort of bunch of existing um, existing elements, but also with some really smart additions. They've kind of built across the top to create a, a real really comprehensive resource that they call um, Develop Me. Um, it's early days, but it's got it's got such great potential. For example, it includes a a career pathway for sort of each and every uh, domain across IT um, so that, you know, anyone at any level in any role can better understand the, the growth opportunities that are available for them, um, who might be able to help them understand that pathway, you know, what are the resources they can connect to, what's the training that might be interesting, what's the on-job experience that they might want to gain if they want to sort of follow that pathway. So um, it's a, you know, fantastic resource and it's been it's been led, you know, from within the team, for the team and, and, and within the team. And it's, um, it's just super engaging. So, you know, really, really pleased to, to see how that, uh, how that has landed and really excited for where it could get to. And some great practical examples there of um, not only that internal development, but also ways that you're engaging with the community to get, um, you know, younger people um, more interested in IT or connecting with different community groups to, Absolutely. yeah put that lens of IT as, as a career, which is great to hear. So when you reflect on your own um, career, Simon, what are some of the mistakes when you, when you look back on them really shaped you as a leader and were a good learning lesson for you? Ooh, yeah, this is always a fun question, isn't it? Like reflect on those, on those mistakes. Um, where I've got, where I kind of look back and think, oh, I got that wrong is where I've, accepted constraints that weren't really there. Um, yeah, you know, there's, there's, there have been times where I've, I know I've had a sort of, I've had a strong sense of what's the right approach in a situation, um, but I've just paid sort of too much attention to the barriers in the way. And I guess, you know, have mistaken move, you know, movable objects for being blockers that are somehow fixed in stone. And, um, and that doesn't lead to a good outcome, right? It's not, it doesn't lead to a good outcome for the organization. It's, it's, you know, it's not a good outcome personally, and it's just not good enough as a leader. So, so I'm, you know, not going there again, I guess, is, is the learning from that and, and being really, being really careful to kind of stop and think or, uh, when I see a constraint or a barrier and think, okay, well, is it though, you know, what, what element of that? Is immovable? What would need to be true for it not to be there? Yeah. How can we find? There's always a bigger picture 
that will that will remove the constraint. It feels like the kind of the the learning there. So, um, you know, if, if I'd learned that earlier, that would have been great. It's arguably one of those ones which kind of only comes with experience. But, um, yes. but that, that would probably be <laughs> that would probably be the one I'd pull out. That's the thing, isn't it? With lessons, you have to go through it to learn from it. From it. Yep. So finally, Simon, can you tell us what's important to you in the months ahead? Uh, yeah, look, there's always a lot going on um, here at Foodies. Um, so the next few months uh, in terms of the, to the sort of the technology journey includes uh, we're migrating our core SAP um, ERP from ECC6 to S4 HANA for those who like the details. That's that's a big one. Um, yeah, a big one for sure. So uh, landing that safely at end, end of end of September. Um we, as ever, will be releasing some great new features into our front-end experience for customers through our sort of webs and apps. Um, we are building out some pretty interesting new business capability, which I couldn't possibly comment on, but so we'll, we'll, we'll look forward to landing that. Um, uh, we're opening a few new stores. Um, we're also, we've got uh, something which you know, feels really good to be part of is, is we'll be supporting our program of social, social supermarkets. And so uh, we operate a couple of social social. Yeah, I can't say that, can I? A couple of social supermarkets so far um, in uh, in partnership with local communities. We've got one in Wellington and one now up in Kaitaia, uh, and, and we aren't stopping there. So it's um, you know it's a great thing that that Foodies does, but it's quite you know quite quite cool for some of my team to be involved in in enabling those as well. Um, so look, that's some of what we've got going on. What's actually you know therefore important to me is to uh, you know, look after the team, uh, encourage people to take a break and um, invest uh, some de- some development time in themselves uh, and so on. And, and, you know, for me, try to live the foodies values and and, and to use them, a phrase we use around here, be a, be a leader worth following. Great, great to hear. Some exciting, busy times ahead. Simon Kennedy, Chief Digital Officer at Foodstuffs North Island. Thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, Kathy. It's been an absolute pleasure.